noise induced hearing loss noise induced hearing loss is a sensory neural hearing deficit that begins at higher frequencies namely 3 to 6000 hertz i repeat begins at higher frequencies and develops gradually as a result of chronic exposure to excessive sound levels although the loss is typically symmetric noise from such sources as firearms or sirens may produce an asymmetric loss acoustic trauma a related condition results from an acute exposure to short term impulsive noise noise is perhaps the most common occupational and environmental hazard as many as 30 million americans are exposed to potentially harmful sound levels in their workplaces outside of work many persons pursue recreational activities and that can produce harmful noise 60 million americans own firearms and many use them without adequate hearing protection other non occupational sources of noise include chainsaws and other power tools amplified music and recreational vehicles such as snowmobiles and motorbikes some types of toys for children can produce sounds capable of causing permanent hearing damage noise can be described in terms of intensity perceived as loudness and frequency perceived as pitch both the intensity and the duration of noise exposure determine the potential for damage to the hair cells of the inner ear even sounds perceived as comfortably loud can be harmful sound intensity is measured as sound pressure level spl in logarithmic decibel scale noise exposure measurements are often expressed as db a scale weighted towards sounds at higher frequencies to which the human ear is more sensitive noise can cause permanent hearing loss at chronic exposures equal to an average spl sound pressure level of 85 decibels or higher for an 8 hour period i repeat again noise can cause permanent hearing loss at chronic exposure to 85 decibels for 8 hours based on the logarithmic scale a 3 db increase in sound pressure level represents a doubling of the sound intensity <coughs> therefore 4 hours of noise exposure at 88 decibels is considered to provide the same noise exposure dose as 8 hours at 85 and a single gunshot which is approximately 140 to 170 decibels has the same sound energy as 40 hours of 90 decibel noise now this is a representation of how the loudness is for various sounds a jet taking off is around 140 decibels rock concert is at 120 motorcycles 90 gunshot 170 conversation 60 decibels epidemiology noise induced hearing loss is the second most common sensory neural hearing loss after age related hearing loss which is called presbyacusis of the more than 28 million americans with some degree of hearing impairment as many as 10 million have hearing loss caused in part by excessive noise exposure in the workplace or during recreational activities the economic cost of occupational hearing loss have been estimated to be in the billions noise induced hearing loss has been well recognized since the industrial revolution any early term for the condition was an early term was boiler makers hearing loss a boiler makers disease because so many workers who had made steam boilers developed hearing loss in today's noisy society even children and young adults are at risk 
A recent study found evidence of high frequency hearing loss in nearly one third of a cohort of college students. Pathophysiology To be perceived, noise sounds must exert a shearing force on the stereocilia of the hair cells lining the basilar membrane of the cochlea. When excessive, this force can lead to cellular metabolic overload, cell damage and cell death. Noise-induced hearing loss therefore represents excessive wear and tear on the delicate inner ear structures. Concurrent exposure to autotoxic substances such as solvents and heavy metals may increase the damage potential of noise. Once exposure to damaging noise level is discontinued, further significant progression of hearing loss stops. Individual susceptibility to noise-induced hearing loss varies greatly, but the reason that some persons are more resistant to it while others are more susceptible is not well understood. Now, this shows the usual graph seen in noise-induced hearing loss, wherein the dip is at 4K. This is at 4K. Invariably, noise-induced hearing loss shows a dip at 4K, neural loss. Now, let us have a look at a case. A teenage girl was seen for school physical examination. Screening audiometry performed in the office revealed a 30 decibel elevation of hearing threshold at 4000 Hz. A confirmatory audiogram taken by an audiologist showed a sensory neural hearing loss in a notch pattern at 4000 Hz. In response to questioning, the girl reported spending several hours a day listening to music through headphones. The previous night, she had spent several hours at a rock concert without he wearing hearing protection. Afterward, she noticed that her ears were ringing and felt like there was a cotton in them. Several days later, her hearing had returned to normal. Now that is the audiometric pattern that we found in which there was this dip at 4K. A 4K dip is a classic manifestation of noise-induced hearing loss. Now, this patient is an example of what is called a temporary threshold shift. Temporary threshold shifts are common in persons exposed to excessive noise and they represent transient hair cell dysfunction. Although complete recovery from a given episode can occur, repeated episodes of such shifts occurring after noise exposure may give way to permanent threshold shifts and this is because hair cells in the cochlea are progressively lost. How do we prevent? Primary prevention. Although no studies have evaluated the efficacy of educating patients about noise-induced hearing loss, family physicians can easily screen for excessive noise exposure during health maintenance visits. An example of a screening question is, are you exposed to excessive noise in your workplace or through music or hobbies? During well child visits parents can be asked whether the child plays with noisy toys adolescents and their parents should be counseled about exposure to amplified music adults should be asked about firearms noisy hobbies and noise exposure at work a positive response to the shout test that is if a person gives an affirmative answer when asked whether it is necessary to shout to converse with someone at arm's length in the workplace indicates a potentially hazardous noise level. A patient who reports significant exposure to noise should be informed that noise-induced hearing loss, although permanent and not fully treatable, is virtually 100% preventable. The clinician can motivate patients to maintain their hearing health and thereby reduce the risk of hearing disability as they grow older. Key factors in this effort are learning to avoid excessive noise when possible and correctly using hearing protection when necessary. Hearing protectors including ear muffs, disposable ear plugs and custom fitted ear plugs can provide 20 
to 40 decibels of attenuation when used correctly. Patients can obtain samples from manufacturers and keep them in the office. Physicians can obtain samples from manufacturers and keep them in the office for distribution and demonstration of techniques <coughs> for proper usage. Counseling about hearing protection is effective, although there is no evidence in favor of physician counseling. Occupational Hearing Conservation The Occupational Safety and Health Administration mandates that employers provide hearing conservation programs for their employees in workplaces where noise levels equal or exceed 85 decibels for an 8-hour time-weighted average. An occupational hearing conservation program includes engineering and administrative controls to reduce noise exposures, employee training in the use of hearing protection and annual audiometry for all workers who are exposed to noise. Physicians providing occupational health services to a company may supervise the hearing conservation program, review abnormal audiograms and advise the program administrator. A worker whose audiogram shows a standard threshold shift, which means worsening of 10 decibels on average at 2000, 3000, 4000 hertz when compared with the employee's baseline test must be notified and should receive additional training and evaluation. Screening for hearing loss. The US Preventive Services Task Force recommends periodic screening of older adults for hearing impairment. Other authorities have advocated similar screening for all patients who report significant noise exposure. The clinician can ask patients if they have difficulty understanding speech in noisy environment, if they need to turn up the television volume or if they frequently have to ask people to repeat sentences. Standardized questionnaires for hearing handicap are available. Some patients may be reluctant to admit hearing loss and family members may be the first to report a problem. If a clinician suspects hearing loss, a careful history of symptoms such as hearing loss, discharge, tinnitus and vertigo should be obtained. The ears should be then examined and audiometry performed. The physical examination of the ears should assess presence of cerumen impaction or evidence of middle ear disease. The Rini Weber tests performed with 512 or 1024 hertz tuning fork can provide clues to whether the loss is conductive or sensorineural. In a Weber test, sound will be lateralized to the side away from the sensorineural loss and towards a conductive deficit. The Rini test will demonstrate air conduction better than bone conduction if the loss is sensorineural. Now, if available, office tympanometry can also detect conductive hearing problems. Audiometry is necessary to confirm a hearing deficit because physical tests of hearing such as whispered voice and the finger rub test are not as reliable. Office audiometry is sufficiently sensitive and specific to serve as a screening method. Screening audiometers for office use generally test at several frequencies in the speech range between 500 and 4000 hertz. Audiometers must be calibrated regularly and used in a quiet room. <clears throat> An audiogram hearing threshold level above 20 decibel is considered abnormal. I repeat again, an audiogram hearing threshold level above 20 decibel is considered abnormal. If the loss appears to be sensorineural, etiologies other than noise should be excluded. While this type of loss in early childhood is often caused by congenital factors, presbyacusis becomes the most common sensorineural condition after midlife. Referral. When do you refer? A patient whose screening shows evidence of hearing loss should be referred for a full audiologic evaluation. Audiologists can test a greater number of frequencies and can measure air and bone conduction to confirm whether the loss is sensorineural, conductive or mixed. They can also perform tests for speech discrimination and speech reception thresholds. If a unilateral or asymmetric sensorineural loss tinnitus or vertigo or other significant ear pathology is found, referral to an otolaryngologist is warranted.
Patients with sudden sensorineural hearing loss, hearing loss developing in minutes or hours, should be referred immediately because treatment initiated within the first 24 hours can improve outcomes. Management Currently, the treatment of noise-induced hearing loss is limited to hearing amplification and counselling. Initially, patients may be reluctant to consider using hearing aids, associating them with the stigma of old age. The family physician can encourage a patient with significant hearing loss to seek treatment and can work with the patient and family to help them cope with a hearing disability. Hearing aids can amplify sounds but despite technological advances often cannot fully correct problems of speech discrimination. An aid should be carefully matched to the person's hearing deficit and lifestyle by a trained audiologist. Vocational rehabilitation may be necessary to ensure that patients can function safely and effectively with their hearing impairment. Final comment. Noise exposure, whether occupational or recreational, is the leading preventable cause of hearing loss. By preventing noise-induced hearing loss, patients can reduce the impact of age-related changes on their hearing. Family physicians should educate and motivate patients of all ages to avoid potentially damaging noise, use hearing protection when necessary and seek treatment for an existing hearing deficit. A comprehensive review of noise-induced hearing loss.